Okay. Are we on? We are on. <laughs> so thank you, everybody who is here and who has signed on online. Um, we will have more people joining us in a second, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. This is Max Collins, um, a photographer and public artist in Buffalo, and we'll be chatting with him today. So Max, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I can. Um, I want to make sure I'm sharing the screen right. Um, for now, I'm just going to share um, some photos and just go through those to show kind of what I do. Um, so, quick bio. I am from Buffalo, New York. Always been a photographer. Studied photography, fine art, and photojournalism in college. And senior year of school, I started getting into like public art and doing like large scale printing. And um, this led to doing um, murals. So I will pull up. So this was the first mural I did in Buffalo. Um, so this kind of uh, shows what I can do. So this is a photo I took of my friend, and it is um, just adhered to the wall. It's just regular paper and wallpaper glue um, used, and then it's just kind of pieced together like a puzzle, um, similar to how like billboards are put together. But um, so yeah, since like being back in Buffalo, like public art is um, kind of like really taken on um, a new role for me because it's kind of I think it plays like a really important role in like the redevelopment of a city and I think with Buffalo that's kind of like this new city on the rise, um, not on the rise, but there's just kind of this new identity that I think that's being formed in Buffalo kind of coming out of this industrial era and there's kind of this new creative feeling that's happening there so I think there's like a huge opportunity for public artists to um, kind of like make a great home in Buffalo and so that's kind of been my primary focus for like the last year and a half since moving back and um, have like a pretty busy summer plan for more of this stuff. So, um, figure I'll just open it up to questions, and we'll just like talk about whatever people want to talk about. Great. So, Max, why photography and public art? Um, photography was just a natural thing for me. I mean, at a very young age, I like saved up. You know, when I was twelve years old, for kind of some bizarre reason, I just start saved up and bought a camera that summer and just started taking photos and you know when as like I got into high school and had like opportunities to study it more um, I just kept doing it and I just kind of you know people just said I had an eye for it and so it just became kind of my medium and um, and I think you know it just became this um, you know this way to communicate and you know it just like I think when you have a knack for something I think it's um, important to pursue that and mm -hmm. it's kind of just turned into my life since then and what caused the shift from strict photography to public art? Um, for me, I think it came down to wanting to work with my hands more. Um, at the same time I got into public art, I was working on a thesis that had to do with internet addiction and like kind of um, our like dependency on like iPhones and computers and stuff and kind of how that was making us very detached like physically from one another and just like the world around us. So as a way to kind of combat that, even with myself who, you know, was spending all my time just like photoshopping and just printing in like a print lab is a very like inclusive process. I wanted to like kind of get out in the world more, use my hands and um, kind of like through that project started doing that. This is just kind of a way to get my mind to think differently about it and um, about the project I was doing. Um, I can show some work from that project. I'll close that window. Um, so what I did for this project, um, so these were like, this is a kind of like my first piece I ever did out in public. Um, so I would take these portraits of college students and I would light their faces only with computer screens and then I would kind of Photoshop them to like make them look pale and um, with some of them it would make their eyes look very bloodshot, so just kind of making people look stoned on computers. <laughs> um, and like, you know, I of course had to include myself in this, so I did a self-portrait. Um, um, but yeah, so that was kind of the beginning of, of all of it and kind of like conceptually how it all came together for me. 
<clears throat> What's your process for pairing or deciding which images to pair with your public location? So. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's really just kind of like a visual thing. Um, you know, like for this, you know, this was this is on the side of a store um, in Buffalo on Elmwood, and you know, I knew that we only had this little area below um, where like the siding ends. So it's like this very like narrow strip, and for me, like you know, I want like big impact. So like, what's the biggest image that we could fit in this little slot? You know, on the side of the building. For me, I think a smile. You know, something like a close up of something was you know what I wanted to do. So um, I. Hey, like the same decision with um, with something like this. I knew I was given like a railing at, at my friend's house. And so trying to think of, you know, people are just driving by this really fast. You know, I don't want something small that they have to like kind of squint their eyes at. It's like, you know, readability with the public art is like a big thing. So I kind of want to see the biggest image that I can fit in something that can just kind of be read and like, you know, process very quickly. So some of the things that you've done have been on sort of friends in locations that friends own and on friends turf, and some mm -hmm. have been a little bit more official mm -hmm. installations or official sort of postings. Um, what have you found to be sort of like the difference in vitality, or um, or I, I guess how do you approach each of them? And is there a different way that you approach sort of more official works versus your Stuff that you're able to do with friends' locations. Um, you know, with the, like friends' locations, there's like it's much more of like a collaboration. It becomes a more spontaneous, and um, you know, there's like sometimes there's less plan planning will go into it. Some, you know, when it's like something like, more officially done, there's a lot more you know mm -hmm. conversation about like approving the piece, and um, you know, so with the friends, it's like much more experimental. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a kind of like a great like guinea pig. Like this is like my first garage door. I ever did, and you know, I knew my friends about this house. I wanted to do something on a garage door and like test out some new like adhesives that I had. So I mean, it came you know, just kind of using my friends as a way to like kind of like flush out new ideas, new processes, and, um, and that sort of thing. And then you you know, I can take that and you know, go to people officially and say, yeah, you know, I have this new way of applying things to garage doors that like are make it waterproof and um, other sorts of things. So that's kind of become. Um, the formula. Where do you see, like, do you have a, a next project already planned out? Um, not really. Well, kind of in like the beginning stages of a pigeon project that I talked to Alex about recently, but um. So yeah, I'm probably going to start pasting pigeons around Buffalo. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be like my new symbol that I'll be doing. That's between all of us, but um, <laughs> in the world, in the world <laughs> on YouTube. But um, so yeah, so um, you know, I'm going to start kind of taking that approach of kind of having like a consistent symbol. I think to work and kind of like create, I guess, more of like a campaign around it. And um, it's just this idea of like the pigeon being like a bird that's reviled and. I think it's like a pretty, you know, beautiful bird, and so I kind of want to like paint colorful pigeons and paste them around town, and kind of have this whole thing about like changing your perception of things and like you know how people can do that with Buffalo and the place around them. Sure. So that's kind of like the beginning stages of that idea, and um, I know I have a lot of like teaching, um, like some workshops I'm going to be doing this summer. Um, I did some work with this town in Springville outside Buffalo where I did like a mural camp with kids where we were given like abandoned storefronts and then me and like 10 little kids, you know, conceptualized a project and then we did our own murals together and um, actually I can show you that work. So that was this stuff. So um, I guess just like this idea, I mean, with the murals is, you know, when I do these workshops, I just tell, you know, the, the main message I'm trying to preach is that this is like, you know, a great way to just engage with your community. And for me, each mural is kind of a way to communicate, you know, what would I want to say to a large group of people? Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking with the kids and saying, like, you know, what do you want to say to your town? And, you know, I was trying to t get them to talk about, you know, whether they like Springville or not. And, like, none of them liked growing up there. And they're like, it's boring. It's, there's nothing to do. And so we kind of settled on the idea that we just put up large pictures of them looking bored. <laughs> 
you know, that way when people are going by, they, you know, then they have to ask, like, oh, what are these faces? And, like, what, why do they look like, you know, so it becomes this conversation that starts. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to be going back again this summer on the, um, this art center, actually, since, like, these murals went up, landed an $800,000 grant to renovate this building um, that we did this mural on. So they're going to renovate this building to a cafe with the second floor being um, an apartment to bring an artist to do residencies. And then they have an old church that they have as their current art center that they're going to expand on. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time out there this summer, um, hopefully doing some more workshops. And, um... and, and so working with the students or working with the, the kids, um, how did you engage their excitement about the project, or how did you um, how did you incorporate them and help them drive this project? Um, I think kind of like putting all the power into their hands. You know, mm -hmm. trying to show up as being much more of a facilitator than me trying to use them as like labor to carry out whatever you know ideas I had going into the project. Mm -hmm. So I think you know by saying like, what do you want to say to the town, and kind of having them answer that question and. You know, and then just like using them as models too, because you know, then they become like the face for like the idea and like the project. And um, you know, by the end of it, you know, it was only a week long project, but it was um, they seemed to like really be into it. And you know, that's why we've since lined up more projects with them. And um, and I think just like in a town, like you know, I think getting kids like to like I think feel empowered like this at that age, um, because I think it's you get away from. Remember that you can like you know you kind of control your environment. It's like you know these kids are there's they say it's you know it's boring in there, but you know it's like you know I'll try to t ask them like what can you do to make Springville not boring? And, like you know can you guys organize like an art show or like put on a play with your friends? And like you know I think it just kind of um, empowers you to feel like a sense of accountability to like you know kind of your environment, your surroundings, and you know for me that's what like I've really taken away from like doing public art and that's you know, why I keep doing it because it's just gotten that process that you know I'm you know through a project I'm working with people that work in the building the people that own the building you know people that are going to see it you know you try to talk to people that live in the area and so it's you know it's just this way of like interacting I think you know with like community growth I think that's that's key what's what's the type of feedback that you receive from people I mean do they do they find um, I don't know. I feel like my work's never been like really provocative. I mean, this was like the first thing I did in Buffalo, and it got some press, and it was kind of interesting to see like reaction. Just like I'm like online because there was articles written in the and um, kind of all over the place. And you see, I mean, I feel like like. The reactions you get online, it's just like the people, you know, just these trolls online that just like hate on everything. And like, you know, people would comment on like this this mural and say like, why did you cover up that brick wall? I love brick. You know, like you just see these like really irrational like thoughts. But um, I don't know. I mean, for me, even a negative reaction is like a really good reaction. I mean, I think any type of reaction is good. I mean, it at least gets them to think that they'd rather see something else on the wall. So when people say, like, why'd you do this? It's like, well, it's like if you had a better idea, like, go, <laughs> go ahead and do it. So it's, um, I try to embrace both reactions. But you know, this one, like, people, um, the guy that, like, helped me prep the wall, you know, was like, you know, people think you're gay, like, after doing this. And, <laughs> like... <laughs> You know, why'd, they, why'd I put, like, an out-of-shape man on the wall and, like, I don't know. So you kind of get, like, reactions like that and, uh, like, you know, on the other side, you get, kind of get these, like, euphoric reactions. Like, oh, my God, this is the best thing. Like, I love Buffalo. So it's, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I just, like, and um, we were talking, you know, Kate and I were talking about this beforehand, but just that, like, you know, public art, this, this is getting kind of, like, common people, just, like, everyday people seeing art like this, and I think that's, like, that's the reaction I really enjoy, like, when I, you know, seeing these, like, homeless guys walk by, and they're like, oh, this is really cool, and, you know, it's just, like, you know, they're not people that go into galleries, and so I think, you know, being able to reach a totally different type of audience with art is, you know, I think a big, another, another big pull for me, um, showing art publicly like this. On a technical side, how long do these tend to sort of stick around? Um, this one, I, I don't know, I look back on this one, I could have done this one much better um, just with like the adhesives that I now use. So this one only lasted about four months, but you know, I've had pieces since last, 
you know, over a year. Mm -hmm. I think there's a piece in Ann Arbor that's lasted since, you know, I graduated there. So that's been about two years. Um, you know, but it's like, you know, someone told me I should call them some semi-permanent. So, um, yeah. you know, it's usually about a year or two, but it's definitely like kind of a cosmetics thing. And, um, but like, you know, with the same process, since it is just like putting up wallpaper, it's kind of led to doing projects where it's, um, you know, where actually I'm just doing wallpaper, so it's right. like hired by a fraternity to like take like a photo of them and then do something in there. Sure. You know, and doing like tables. Um, you know, in that same process, you know, doing on found objects. So that, you know, I'll just you know now I just have a habit of collecting trash, and I can kind of put, you know, kind of the mantra is now that you know I just put photos on things, and so whatever kind of objects I can find that you know I think can work conceptually with like the image um, you know kind of like sky's the limit with what I can do so this was you know this is like kind of like six foot tall fence and it's actually printed out on a little home printer I just printed them out eight by ten inch sections and um, was able to put this together um, How long does it usually take you to put one up? Um, like something like this was like hour and a half. Um, let's see, like this one was about 12 hour install. It was just me and another guy and a one, <laughs> a one ladder, so it was kind of like limited. Um, so it kind of depends. I mean, these, you know, these went up in like a few hours. How does the process of, um, of pasting or repasting, how has it affected the way that you photograph? Um, because uh, like a lot of the printing I do is black and white with the, with the murals, okay. um, you start to kind of think more. You know, with like you know, there's definitely certain qualities that make black and white photos just like you know, more um, just like make them pop more. You know, mm -hmm. like the black and white stuff. I'm always kind of looking for like kind of like a one light source, very contrasty, mm -hmm. something that just like pops really well. Um, so there's that, but that's like, you know, sometimes it just comes down to editing and like doing black and white. So yeah, so I guess I'm much more, you know, I'm kind of back to like where I started shooting black and white films. So I'm kind of back to, back to thinking and shooting in black and white more, more so doing the public work. Uh, can, you also, can you go back to um, the Wonderful Woman Dancing? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. That um, so... In Buffalo, um, right on the waterfront, there's these old grain elevators that have since been bought and turned into, well, they're trying to kind of retransform this space into an arts venue of sorts. And so there was this like, kind of experimental theater group that did a play in these silos. And then there was an art festival called City of Night. And, um, you know, they had like artist booths and then they had artists do installations, like, you know, temporary installations. But I was actually able to propose and um, get a permanent installation accepted. So this is something I did in um, the old green elevator. So, so I did a photo shoot with a dancer in town who was actually part of a theater production at the silos and um, just did different shots of her dancing and kind of using kind of the shapes and like kind of the different um, shapes of the building and had her kind of correspond with that. So I mean my favorite image of this project, which is like my favorite image I've taken in Buffalo, um, is this one where she's Bending backwards with it, so, so yeah. So this one, you know, this is like a cool um, project. You know, that's was able to stay up and is now part of the tours that are given um, at these elevators. But I mean, I feel like, you know, with this project, it was kind of trying to show, you know, kind of where Buffalo came from, which is like you know this industrial um, feel, but then kind of like trying to highlight the arts with it because I feel like kind of that's going to be a big part in the. The new identity of the city. Hey Max, your work is like the canvas for your work is not very, very something that's been off. It's always a found place or space or object. Mm -hmm. Why do you, why is it that you choose to do that as opposed to like a more typical or what I would think of as an all kind of way of just like <laughs> framing the images you take and hang them on the wall? Mm -hmm. why, why is it that you choose to interact with like, those environments 
such like a really intimate way that like your work becomes part of that moment. Yeah. Like, you're like in this this image is showing that it like in a weird way it visually extends the mm -hmm. I think it's really, you know, I came from like a very conceptual art program that pushed, you know, very, like a lot of different methods and it's like, you know, what's your idea and what are the different avenues that you can express this? And so I kind of be thinking of like, all right, you know, I have this image, but is there another way to push the idea or how can I make it more effective? For me, like good art is, I always measure by how effective it is with like it conveying a message. And so knowing I could do this photo shoot in these elevators and then do it on the wall in the place that I took the photo, it, you know, totally, you know, just... I think just kind of takes the photo to a whole new place, and um, and I think just you know gives it like a whole other like kind of aura to it. I think when you're in this building, like you know the fact that this building's kind of being redefined, and I was able to do this installation, I think it like you know just totally adds to that, you know, contributes to that I, that thought. I think one of the things that really drew me to this project in particular is that. You're almost, I mean, you're creating visual space where there's not space. Um, I mean, it's almost like a, if you're walking through a hall of mirrors or something. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, there's something sort of fascinating about that. <clears throat> it's, I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous project. Yeah, I think, um, that's kind of been like a new kind of like theme that's emerged in my work is like transforming space has become this new this new way of doing it. So I mean, this was like this tiny little apartment living room that my friend lived in in Chicago, and we you know I proposed that we do an image in there, and so we did this kind of very perspective driven shot of a tree, and like all of a sudden it just totally opened up, and so now seeing kind of this whole different purpose with like photos with art, you know, there's kind of that that aspect to it. So that's something I've been like doing more and like, you know, going to restaurants and trying to suggest like, hey, you know, we can do the, you know, a photo on this wall and like it's totally opened up spacing now and um what's your favorite project? You have to have like an absolute favorite. Absolute favorite? Yeah. Um, I mean I don't know. It's it's hard to say this. This was probably my. It's been my favorite project. Um, I think conceptually, this is my favorite project, um, just because I think it's like such a great. I think like there's all these different facets of like this process and like you know what I do that came together. You know, it's just like this. The image of the woman bending backwards, like just that alone as a, as a photograph is something I was extremely proud of, and then just being able to like, do it on this wall, and um, you know, and have people come in and see it that worked in that building in the 70s, and you know, you know, there's this, there's this whole, you know, it's kind of this whole, this whole package. Um, so there's kind of like every element of the of the project um, worked for me, but. Um, totally. <laughs> and it's yeah, but. Um, I mean, so I had to answer the question, what was my proudest accomplishment the other day, and I had to, you know, talk about the Springville Project, just because, you know, there was kind of this, like, you know, I saw, I was able to see the effect of this work, right, you know, within, like, a few months after we did this project, the town alone just, you know, raised $30,000 just amongst people that live there to, like, help renovate this building, and I kind of, you know, it was more than just this project that, you know, got that going, but, um, you know, there, I think it kind of it really kind of piqued the excitement around around the idea of turning this pro building around, and um, you know, it was kind of the first time I was able to, you know, work with little kids and kind of see them do it. So it was kind of for me a very satisfying project, and for me, I feel like teaching is like such a re you know important thing to do, especially with work like this. It's um, you know, just kind of made me feel all warm inside. <laughs> I think this could be an interesting template for future, you know, for other small towns and or sections of cities too. Totally. Um, and one, um, there's a sort of a push in a number of cities that I recently read about um, that's talking about sort of group-led architecture. And so residents of a certain section of the city coming together, putting money together to sort of rehabilitate blighted areas. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think sort of group art in the same way allows people to sort of take their space in their own hands. Next, I have a question regarding the uh, issues. Yeah. First part, um, renegade behavior versus your, uh, you have approval. Mm -hmm. um, where you as, this is a thrill-seeking thing, obviously. I, I've done some um, more sculptural type work mm -hmm. on my own. That mentors in the public, but it's kind of you know, on that fine line of private. Mm -hmm. For you, where would you um, find, I guess, more of the adrenaline rush from doing this type of work? Um, I get an adrenaline rush like every time I'm like working on a wall outside. Um, just because I just like you get so excited knowing that there's gonna be like people that are gonna see it and um, but it's a totally I mean I guess it's a different type of rush though I mean like this is something that I just kind of did on the fly uh, when I was in Boston and um, so you know it kind of has that like illegal feel where though like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this I can't you know I shouldn't be seen doing this and um, but I don't know at the end of the day like I think I'd rather work with you know, I'd rather have permission because I think it just leads to quality work. I think, you know, my my distaste for some street art and like graffiti is just that, you know, it's just people walking around and just kind of scribbling a name and there's kind of no aesthetic value to it. It's like, you know, I appreciate them like going out and doing it, but it's you know, if you're not gonna do anything that makes me you know, makes me want to look at it more than like, you know, just like waste you know, just like you know, just vandalism at that point. So, you know, I can appreciate good street art, but when it's just kind of scribbling, it's um you know, I just think you know you get. I think it turns people off to it, and um, I kind of like lost where I was going with this, but. <laughs> oh, well, well, no, it's, I mean, that, that one back at yeah. you know, from the small city of Geneva, mm. which is part of Western New York. We do actually have a small mural arts program, and uh, I think some people, having seen that, are just now starting to experiment with. Um, you know the applied uh, textures to to the walls. You know, using collage and mm. using um, various media. Um, and I see a lot of that, that. There is also that community support, and then there's like, wait a minute, somebody just did something on their mm -hmm. and uh, they just peeled it off. It was like this image of Bill Murray. You can see it's like uh, no one. Will Oh, uh, no. And um, I think it's related to some website. So the city was like, no, we got to take it. <laughs> but, but with all the, uh, the uh, uh, adhesives that they use, it's, it's impossible to take it all off. And then they try to take it off, and it's even shittier. Yeah, no, it just looks work. scratched off. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but uh, what, so that's leading my second question. How do you sort of mask over some of that? Some of the parts that maybe got messed up, you spray paint. I mean, are you just using like oh, like once it starts weathering? Yeah. Do you use other media in the you know the applied adhesive um, right now? Um. Typically not. Typically it's just glue. Um. There was. You know, this is a mural I did in Buffalo. You know, so something like this was like kind of a collaboration with different painters, and so there was other work that was used. But um, I mean, with my aspect of it, um, you know, it's just paper glue, and I did end up, you know, putting like polyurethane on top of it just to, you know, seal it in a little bit better. So you know, what I found with like professional artists that use the same process, they usually work with a kind of a mixture of a medium gel and the glue, and that way it's kind of much more of like a plastic. You know, adhesive that's holding it in, um, and um, I've since kind of like figured, you know, found other ways of doing it more permanently. So like, you know, silk screening images on canvas, or um, not, can you know, you can do it on canvas. Or there's one way of doing it where you actually print a photograph on. They call it. It's just like parachute. Um, 
yeah. you know, lining, and so it's like, you know, very malleable, like, fabric, and then you actually hold that in with a medium gel, and you can apply it to the wall and kind of get the same texture, so, you know, if you're doing it on brick, you can still get all the outlines. And, mm -hmm. yeah, so I know that's that's a way that I think a lot of murals get done. I know in, like, Philadelphia that has, like, a big mural program. I think they do a lot of murals that way. That way, you know, it becomes this temporary thing they can get done off-site, and, you know, instead of someone's, you know, painting a wall for three weeks, it's just a one a one day install. It's interesting. I've never thought of you as just a street artist. I would <laughs> so not think of your work in that category. And then I think of like street artists and graffiti artists, and like that's more about a notion of control and almost like weird domination, like who's in control of that mm -hmm. space. And I don't think of your work in that category. But I think of other kind of well-known artists that sort of straddle you know, their, their canvas or their space. Their installations are outdoors and very public people like Shepard Perry. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because to some degree, one of the biggest criticisms of his work is that he co-opted street art and trying, is trying to kind of like sanitize it in a weird way. Mm -hmm. why he want to punched in the face of Copenhagen, which is probably one of the more benign cities in the world. Um, so it's, where, where do you kind of place yourself on a continuum of like if street artists and graffiti artists are one of the spectrum and like gallery based, you know, people hanging in the MoMA are the other end of the spectrum, where are you on that? I would say I'd be just below average, probably towards the street artists. Um, just because I, I love their, I like, I, I don't know, I, I like that, I like the way they think. I like, I just like the, you know, how they go about doing it. And some, um, there's kind of this like no rule mentality about it. And I think it's totally kind of opened up, you know, how I think about work where, you know, instead you kind of grow up, you know, being like more traditionally as a photographer, it's like, you know, I'm going to print in the dark room, I'm going to frame it, I'm going to put it in the gallery, and that's it. You know, I think once I started seeing like documentaries about like street artists and graffiti writers, you see that like anything is possible. You know, so it's kind of you know they push that thought, and you know, I I just associate it much more with like a grassroots feel. But do you think that comes from where you come from? You know, coming from the Rust Belt, going to school in the Rust Belt, practicing, setting up shops, setting up your studio in the Rust Belt. Mm -hmm. you think that has a Totally. I don't know. I've never thought about it. <laughs> How about some of your influence? You, so you have an undergraduate degree in fine arts, mm -hmm. and so um, you know, in art theory. And I have an undergraduate degree in fine arts as well. So some of my influences for doing some kind of public work, or in medical art, uh, is probably one of the largest. There are a lot. I would say one, one. Um, well, I guess it's a duo, but like Jean Claude and Christo, um, they're like a public art duo. Um, Jean Claude is no more, but um, just I've learned a lot about public art through you know how they approach it and. Um, so they've always been huge influences for me, and you know the way they've embraced like temporary art um, has been like a huge element of um, of my work. But I guess more so, um, like Shepard Fairey was like you know always been a huge fan. He was kind of always this kind of like you know the rock star of like street art. But you know through him, I think you, know, you can like you know get into that world and find other artists. And um, there's another artist, Jr. Who um, is kind of blown up. He won the TED Prize in 2011, I think, and he, you know, very similar formula. To, you know, I've kind of just like started to emulate him. I found out about his work and I just started copying him. And so, you know, he, his formula is that he takes portraits of people and he pastes them in their environment. And so, you know, it's kind of like calls it the Inside Out project, and that's like one part of his work where, you know, you know, he just wants to put the face of the community out on the buildings and, you know, that aspect of it. And so seeing, and like, the scale and ambition of his projects, because he's done it all over the world and through his TED Prize money, has just this machine where people submit portraits of themselves and then 
he sends them prints to then paste. And so he's made it very open and like, you know, he doesn't kind of hoard the process at all. So um what about some of the earlier one, even the top artists or going back to like Mm -hmm. Um, not so much with the public stuff. Um, Rauschenberg was huge. I think just like his use of materials was like very influential. I mean, kind of seeing like a lot of like use of like found objects and stuff. Um, that's something I've incorporated with much more with like interior or like fine art that I'll do. Um, but not so much with the public stuff. I think the public works kind of come about from a lot more contemporary artists. And but I don't know, like, I don't know who to, if I could attribute this to anyone specific, but I think just maybe the notion, um, I mean, I'm sure if I knew my art history a little better, just the notion of, like, making art accessible to more people. You know, I think art can be a very... Um, exclusive thing to people and you know what I've really enjoyed the reactions I enjoy most are people that aren't into art and kind of just have this very natural reaction I think that's why I really enjoy working with kids because you get this very natural reaction to it and um, you know like the, art doesn't have to always be this very like highly intellectual thing and, you know um, I mean it can be but I mean <laughs> you know what I'm saying where it's you know, it just it makes it so just like the average average person can come by and see it and you know makes them you know just kind of engage and start seeing like you know much more of a I don't know I, I just think people don't have like as much like visual quality in their life that they should and um, I don't think it has to be like this thing of high society so it's kind of like a soapbox rant of mine but <laughs> I think I think that makes sense and I think um, one of the things that we were talking about earlier is that just by pasting something like this, it makes you rethink what your surroundings are. Mm -hmm. It makes you look at a garage door in a way that you haven't looked at a garage door. Mm -hmm. um, and any time that you can sort of pop somebody out of their just day-to-day -day consciousness, it's typically a good thing. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Um, I mean, like one artist that I, the guy JR, who I was talking about earlier, um, Someone asked him what his take on art was, and he says, art will make you forget about your next meal or, like, where your next meal is coming from. So I think, you know, when art can kind of transport you and just kind of take you to another world, I think that can be a really, you know, it's, I think a great reaction to work, and I think, I think art typically has that power, so why not share it with everyone? Thanks. Will you go back to the Hangouts? It looks like we might have a... Um did I mess it up? There it is. Looks like we just have a comment. Oh. I don't have any oh, there you, go. there you got us. <laughs> Never mind. Just wanted to make sure that we were, weren't missing anything. If you had all the money in the world <laughs> takes wherever you wanted to, mm -hmm. but do you have any sort of a dream projects that you would tackle um, or dream places that you would? I think just I, I would love to just know I could um, go up in scale in a significant mm -hmm. way. Um, like right on the waterfront in Buffalo, you just kind of see all these old abandoned industrial buildings. So, you know, it would be great to do stuff on those and... Um, you know, I guess just like take this to a you know a much larger scale. I think scale is something I'd love to see increase. Um, One of the things that we were talking about earlier too um, is basically how art and really anything that's sort of associated with art, you have to be able to get outside of art to actually get it done. So you have to connect with people. Mm -hmm. um, you have to um, work with non-artists. Um, what has been sort of, what sort of approach has been most successful for you in terms of sort of getting to do what you want to do? Um, and what has been some of the setbacks that you've found um, as you've gone from sort of the university world to... Yeah. Well, I think um, you realize you're just not going to do whatever you want all the time. And... Um, so, like, you know, when I have to work with people, um, like the first one I did, 
Like with this project, I mean, this was kind of a, a project I had to propose to the building owners, and it was, you know, several, you know, probably 10 or 11 ideas I had to propose to them by the time we settled on this. So it was something where all of a sudden you have to work with someone else's taste. And so um, I think, like, just coming off as professional as I can, I mean, not trying to be like the sloppy artist guy. Um, and knowing that, you know, it's, you know, I need to, like, kind of appease someone else's taste. So, like, working towards their vision, something that, like, someone else would want to see. But then, at the same time, you know, I would always try to propose my own ideas. So give them what, you know, always give them, like, the people that you're working with what they would want to see. And then maybe kind of show them, like, what I would be thinking. And, you know, just, like, providing options, I guess. Um, it's kind of been something I've really learned and just... Because um, I think there's this idea, I think when people think like working with an artist, they just like want to have their vision. And so I've kind of approached it, you know, kind of from like a business standpoint of like, you know, making everyone happy and, um, you know, in the end trying to get, you know, maybe a compromise or hopefully my, my own idea out. Thanks. I think, yeah, that's exactly how I think In a way, a part of a, a city, you're kind of a planner. Mm -hmm. and Take, for example, this guy in the yoga pose. Um, the side of this, is it a cafe? Is it a, um, it's a sandwich shop. It's a sandwich shop, but maybe the sandwich shop folds, and some person with the uh, idea for a yoga studio mm -hmm. automatically will be like, I got to have that building, <laughs> for that mural. Yeah. And so you, maybe you turn over you know, the rate of, commercialism within a space thanks totally. to your work and that makes you you know existential so much. Totally. By doing just a simple act of art. Yeah. Yeah. I've never really thought about like the chain reaction of like the content of a mural like that. But I mean it's kind of like proven like, you know, there's been studies that show that like murals do add to like the value of a building. And so, you know, kind of one of the pitches that we've had in Buffalo with like all these abandoned buildings downtown, especially that are always up for sale now for sale, you know, being able to approach realtors and say, this building's for sale, let's do a mural on it, we'll get some eyes on it. And, you know, when you have a piece of art on a building, it, you know, it does give it value. And um, so, so yeah, I think there is um, an element to that. And I think with the amount of abandoned buildings in Buffalo, it's, uh, you know, it's there for the taking. So. It's worked out with um, returning back. What other cities besides Buffalo, besides Springfield, I guess besides Western New York? Um, well, I started doing this when I was living in Ann Arbor, so I did Ann Arbor, um, did some things in Detroit. Um, you know, kind of when I travel, I'll always just, like, find, like, you know, it's just as easy as finding, like, a FedEx, and, you know, as long as I got, like, a 36-inch plotter, you know, I can just have my computer and prep some files and, you know, just kind of carry some stuff around and, um, you know, I was just, like, in Boston, I just, like, printed this out right when I landed and carried that around and, <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, let's do this wall real quick, and you know, it's like five minutes out of your way. So it just kind of comes with a nice, like, fun way of traveling. It's like, so finding stuff to do, you just kind of search, you know, explore the city and and do pieces. But um, yeah, some stuff in yeah, L.A., Chicago, Detroit, and Buffalo are kind of the places I've done this. But I have some plans for to do some murals in Lexington though this summer. So. I did a pro I did a project for the National Horse Show there this fall, so they're interested in. Um, I, I've noticed that a lot of your you know, like horses there. Hmm. A lot of um, the focuses of your murals are are deep. Um, do you ever see yourself kind of shifting more towards? Like I know you have some horses in this sort of in a tree. Um, mm -hmm. Something less, um, less defined than a person, more, more abstract. 
Uh, I think when the location calls for, it kind of comes back to that question of like, you know, evaluating the space and kind of figuring out what image is appropriate. Like, you know, we're doing a wall at this restaurant and, you know, they're kind of this, um, you know, it's kind of like a healthy cafe, you know, like a lot of fresh juices and stuff like that. And so we're kind of doing like a nature themed um, mural in their bathroom and like the wall behind their counter. So in like that instance, it's kind of working with like, you know, would it make sense to kind of put up a big face like in this place where you're trying to eat healthy. So, you know, it's, um, but um, for me, I mean, I'm, I think like portrait photography is like what I've done the longest and like what I like. And um, so I'm always, I think, always trying to get people into my stuff. And I think, um, I don't know, I find that there is kind of a disconnect. I think, I think by putting, like doing the public stuff with people, I think it, Makes you stay. I mean, I don't know. I find Buffalo sometimes to be a very like insular place. Like you know, I don't find myself kind of looking up and smiling at a lot of people. And I think, um, and I think by putting faces up around, I think it kind of just makes you more comfortable. Maybe like staring at like a face longer, and I think um, just getting more comfortable around people and like neighbors and that element of it. And I just find people to be like the most interesting. So like seeing a big set of eyes, I think it's much better than like anything else I could imagine. So um, I think it's just like personal taste at that point. But I always love me a good landscape, though. <laughs> Very serene, it's peaceful, but I'd rather something be more provocative when it's out in public. Now, where was that? Um, this was done at the All Tech Arena on the Kentucky uh, Horse Grounds or something. It's like in Lexington. It's um, yeah. So they host. They're now hosting the National Horse Show there, and. This was um, a lounge, like a multi-purpose room that was transformed into a um, rider's lounge, like VIP room. So they had, you know, they totally transformed this room. So we were the first ones to get in there. But they, you know, you see the framing. They did, like, burlap all over the walls and put carpeting in and all this furniture and stuff. And that was fun. Apparently Bruce Springsteen got to see this, so I was, I was happy. <laughs> that was just some pretty good eyes to get up. <laughs> I did not know he was a big horseman. I didn't even know the National Horse Show was a big deal before I did this project. Like, I was down there and, like, saw, like, all this stuff happening. I was like, is this a gay thing? <laughs> but, yeah, it used to be held at Madison Square Garden, apparently. Um, this was just like a project I did um, in December um, in the west side of Buffalo. This was just like, you know, this uh, little block that has a bunch of shops. So we, Buffalo First is an organization that pushes um, kind of local commerce and that sort of thing. And so we did portraits of business owners that worked in this building around this block and pasted them up and tried to get some buzz to uh, come to this part of town and buy some local goods. So it was fun. Do you ever envision doing sort of, I know we, we talk about sort of uh, building to a bigger scale. Do you ever envision sort of doing maybe a bigger project with sort of a more of a plan, like a city planning approach? Mm -hmm. um, working with city planners, working with other artists to sort of create a really, I don't know, maybe tackle an entire section of Buffalo? Or, mm -hmm. Totally. Um, I mean, I was able to get, um, there's a, this Buffalo News article about um, some of the work I did, and like since then, that was great, because like, you know, all these people kind of come in, coming out of the woodwork and being able to approach me, and, you know, actually one sitter planner, you know, said like, you know, actually wants to do something on the um, grain elevator. It's like a large thing and is interested in working with me and like him helping me kind of plan the logistics of something like that. And so, um, so yeah, totally. Kind of like getting like a whole team together and kind of really making it like a large operation. But um, I still like I feel just like experience wise, like you know, I, I just know there's a lot more to learn, and so you know, it kind of becomes that that you know, do I just jump into it and figure it out on the fly? So I've, I've been like a little more hesitant to jump into that, especially um, you know, I have started kind of like working more interior. I think probably just because of like the winter time, but you know, this is kind of the stuff I do more like in my studio and work so but still large I mean this is like a seven foot tall piece um, but yeah so trying to keep it manageable for right now 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a guy who's fixing up um, this old warehouse building downtown that used to be a print shop, and so he's turning it like into his house actually, and so he was throwing out hundreds and hundreds of these old silkscreen frames. So he took those frames and I kind of made this shape out of them, took his portrait when he was just demoing the building one day and uh, I have a map from Buffalo from 1948 superimposed on his face. So yeah, Buffalo's a great place for reusing materials too. Like for this bathroom we're designing, we just like got like 80 square foot of like these seven inch oak boards for like 30 bucks. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, you can just find all sorts of stuff. So it's always been a great place to make work on the cheap. <laughs> you know, this is just like a fence like that was behind my stepdad's shop and, you know, put a photo on it and like sell it for a few hundred dollars. Can I read that with your niece? Mm, yes, <laughs> that is my niece. This was a photo taken on the first day I babysat her. <laughs> It wasn't my fault because I mean I was I was I was told three things where if she didn't respond to like you know when she cries if she doesn't respond to a bottle plane or like something else then <laughs> it's just a tantrum cry so she was just throwing a tantrum she was right next to this light the next to the window the light the light was pretty so that's great but <laughs> sister wasn't pleased <laughs> next very well with no trespassing sign. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but yeah, this surprisingly got bought and put into this person's living room. So, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this crazy old artist who lives down the street from me actually has it. So, it's... I never imagined anyone would want this, but. <laughs> We should probably start wrapping up. Does anybody have any last questions? Thank you so much for coming in, guys. Thank you for having me. And sharing your slides. So we can go ahead and end the broadcast. Sorry, Mary. Wave. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.